How would you like to learn a super fast way to improve your forehand return? Well, in today's lesson, I'm gonna give you a secret that I don't see anyone else teaching, and it is one that's gonna make all the difference for your return of serve. Hi, my name is Jeff Salzenstein. I'm the founder of Tennis Evolution, one of the leading online tennis instruction websites in the world, passionate and committed to help passionate and committed tennis players like you. If you are obsessed with tennis, if you have a growth mindset and you focus on progress and improvement, you are in the right place. And in today's lesson, I've got a powerful tip to give you for your forehand return of serve. And you can actually do it on your backhand return of serve as well. We're gonna focus on the forehand today. Now, I've been coaching for over a decade at the time of this video. I also played on the pro tour for 11 years. I struggled myself at times with my return and I've seen players that I work with struggle. And when they come to me for lessons, what I focus on, okay, what I focus on is helping them with their balance and their footwork on their return to serve. Listen, this is the most important shot in tennis after the serve. It's probably a tie between the serve and the return. So what we've got to do is we've got to give you a framework. And the problem that I see is that a lot of players, when they sw swing on their return, they over-rotate. So as they're hitting the return, they hit the ball and they over-rotate and they bring their shoulder around and they bring their foot through and they are rotating too early and too much. They're also leaning in this direction. So I found a drill that can help players find their timing and their balance. Timing and balance is the secret sauce to playing amazing tennis and it's not practiced enough. So I can give you a fundamental drill right now that can help you with your forehand return and it's as simple as this. Now, when I say it's as simple as this, it's a simple drill, but I didn't say it was easy. When I work with players and I show them this drill, it's not easy for them to get it at first and here it is you are going to practice a footwork pattern that I call back to front. So you're gonna go off your outside leg and you're gonna land on your front foot like this. So essentially, and I'm not saying you, got, you have to do this on every return, but there are many returns that call for this. You're gonna focus on this load here after the split, the load, and then you're gonna transfer the weight to the front foot. This is teaching you to transfer weight. This is teaching you to go from this leg to this leg on the return. Now, when I have players practice this, they tend to load, and then again, they'll transfer the weight, but see how my body turned? They'll load, and then they'll turn like this, and this causes mishits. This causes the ball to go through the middle of the court instead of hitting lasers cross court. This causes mishits, gets players to pull off the ball. So when you're practicing this, what you wanna do, watch what I do here. You're gonna load, and let's say you get the weight here. You get the weight on the front foot. See how my shoulders are facing towards you? What you wanna do is when you land, you still wanna be facing at a diagonal. You wanna be facing at a 45 degree angle. Now, before you say that's crazy, Jeff, I don't believe you, you've got to go out and try this and see what happens. Don't try it in a match. Try it with someone bouncing a ball or bouncing it to yourself. But you're going to swing and notice my shoulders right now. My shoulders haven't rotated. Why is this so important? Because when a player serves fast to you, if you try to rotate into a fast shot, it's very difficult to time. So essentially what you're doing is you're creating a stable body with great balance and the racket can just accelerate because the body is not moving and jerking. If the body stays stable, the hand can go fast. Let me say that again. If the body stays stable and doesn't over rotate, the hand can accelerate and go fast. If you rotate before your hand comes through, it will slow down your hand and cause you to mistime the ball. Your head is moving, your eyes are moving, you can't track it when you're rotating and moving your head. 99% of all players are doing this. This is for you. I've yet to see a player load this leg and under rotate, okay, to actually go the other way. I see players rotating like this. So one of the big keys is when you transfer the weight here, when you transfer the weight here, is you're gonna focus on bending the back leg. You're gonna focus on bending the back leg to learn this weight transfer. 
Now, when you start landing on your front foot, you're going to hop three times, okay? I have players hop three times. One, two, three. Okay, I'll do it again. One, sorry, one, two, three. I was doing one, two with the transfer of the weight, but really what you wanna practice, I mean, you wanna do that, but you wanna go one, two, three with your hop. Again, notice my shoulders, notice my head position. Okay. See, my head is still staying on my shoulder here. My chin is staying on my shoulder. As soon as the head moves this way, it's over. Lights out, sayonara, not gonna work for you. As soon as your shoulders move early, it's not gonna work for you. So you wanna practice this hopping drill with your shoulders facing at a diagonal. Absolutely critical to your success. Now. When balls come fast, when someone serves fast, this is what you wanna focus on. But when someone's serving really slow, yes, you can rotate more. The key is that you wanna make sure that when you rotate, you keep your head still on your, on your dominant hitting shoulder here. You keep your chin here. So when you do rotate, you don't wanna get your head to move this direction. Remember though, first serves, high kick serves, especially high kick serves, you're gonna load, and you're gonna hop three times. Now you won't do that in a match, of course, but this is a drill to go out and practice. Next time you go practice your return, see if you are that player that, that lands on this foot and rotates too much. I bet that you are, because I've seen it over and over again, and we have to work to correct it. Now, let me take it a step further. I'm gonna focus on the landing. After you land, what to do after. So if I go here, from here, after the ball is gone, notice my body position, then I can square up. What happens is that players try to rotate too fast. They try to square up too fast. I want you to break this up into parts as you're learning, as you're learning because remember, it's all about progressions. Learning simple progressions, master these progressions over time and your tennis will get better. Instead of rushing, instead of trying to skip steps, I want you to go a little bit slower and get these little details down. I want you to be a master at the game. I want you to keep improving. So, when you land here, then you can square up. So it looks something like this. This is my one, this is my two. One, two. It might look a little mechanical at the beginning, but I want you to get this move down and then this move down. One thing I haven't pointed out yet is that your follow through has to be consistent. And I like to follow through above the opposite shoulder. I like to catch the racket on the, on the throat and I like to finish above the shoulder because this will solidify your foundation. If every follow through is different, you won't develop that consistency. You'll notice as I've taught this lesson today, every time I've done the same thing, back to front. Staying sideways, not over rotating. Consistency, consistency in your efforts and with your foundation. And if you have any questions about this lesson, of course, leave a comment or question below. But let's summarize it right now. Forehand return, making sure you come out of the split and you learn to transfer your weight from the back foot to the front foot. You transfer the weight, you make sure that you don't over rotate. Transfer your weight, don't over rotate. Okay, that kind of rhymes. You get to here without rotating. You make sure that your head stays on your dominant shoulder. You make sure that you finish above your shoulder. And finally, when you're done and you get this move down, then you can square up like this in a wide base. Again, any questions, leave them below. I'm here to help. This is a tip that absolutely transforms the forehand returns of players that I work with, and I want you to do that too. I want you to transform your return. I want you to have a clear process to improve. My name is Jeff Salzenstein. It's been a pleasure to make this forehand return video for you. I've got a free gift. Click the link below or somewhere in this video to pick up our free Tennis Evolution app. Inside the app, we're giving you a complimentary membership, 21 lessons for your forehand, your backhand, your serve, your footwork injury prevention, mindset, so much more. Click the link below or somewhere in this video. Let's get started accelerating your results today and getting to the next level.